Okay. So what we're trying to do here is set up a horse's worst nightmare. Okay? A lot of horses, oh let me introduce Dana first. Dana is a four-year-old Arabian mare. She's never been trained, so no experience. She was never saddled, never ridden. Uh, I've done one session with her, we did it about two days ago. And what I try to demonstrate to people, some people think I try to show off, <laughs> but it's not. What I try to demonstrate to people is the simplicity of the horse's language. A lot of people, they compete with their horses, they travel with their horses, and they call me up and they say, we have issues. You know, my horse stops jumping at competitions. My horse rears every time I ask it to trot. My horse bites me. My horse uh, just is always scared of everything. My horse won't go over water. My horse won't go into trailers. If, if my horse hears a sound like this, it jumps out of its skin. Um, my horse hates poles. And it's, it's really quite funny to listen to all the different excuses that people give me as to why these horses do these things. But the, the simple truth is, horses, that all the issues for horses come from a lack of two things. Either it's a lack of respect or a lack of trust. So right now, why do you think she's calling out? She's calling out because she's saying, where am I? This little lion, not little, sorry, that young lion is holding me by a rope and showing me off to all the other lions and lionesses out here. I'm the only prey animal in this area and I have no herd. So, <laughs> money, come get me. So she, she doesn't have that trust. She, she's nervous, she's, she's scared. And that's an example of a very smart horse. She's not a problem. She's a good horse because she's evolved or her ancestors have evolved over 50 million years to be able to survive in nature. So we as humans, we've got the flexibility of thinking. We can learn different languages. We can learn Arabic, English, Chinese, German, French, whatever. We can even learn how to communicate with animals. We train dogs, don't we? We communicate with birds. We also communicate with horses. Now, if we, if we had not communicated with those three animals, who agrees with me that the world today would be a different place? It would look completely different. So we owe it entire, the entire setup, the entire way we live our lives to this animal here. So don't you think it's worth just knowing a little bit about how they think and how they interact and how we can actually get a message from my mind to her mind? You guys ready for that? Good. So I promise I, I don't cheat, okay? I don't like to do work before with a horse and then come out and show you, look how great I am. You're gonna see all the problems, okay? <clears throat> and I'm, I, it's uncut. I don't know if this is gonna be too much for her today, this trailer, okay? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna build her confidence. So how do we build confidence? We have to first gain the horse's respect. Can I have the horse, please? Thank you. Now, respect, when you're talking about horses and the way that horses interact with each other, it's exactly the same way humans interact with each other. It's based on who controls whose feet. Say, for example, you guys are... Uh, out. Say you guys, you work for companies, okay? And the CEO, one day, he, uh, he wants you to do something. Do you think the CEO will come off out of the 36th floor of his office, walk down to the second floor, find your cubicle, and say, hey, Mike, um, I really need you to help me with this. What can I get for you to get to, 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 to do this for me? Or would he just sit in his office, call a number and say, hey Mike, can you come up to my office please? So in, 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 in actual fact, what's happening is he's controlling your feet or she's controlling your feet. So a, a good sign of um, um, leadership is who's got the most control over feet, okay? Presidents, presidents of countries, they point a finger, a whole army goes to war. Okay, they don't move. So that's a demonstration of respect. If she'll move respectfully, nicely, 
This is no control from me. This is her doing whatever she wants and me saying, okay, whatever you want. Okay, so she knows that I haven't got, she, she hasn't, I don't have her respect. <laughs> the other thing is, how do I develop trust with a horse? Trust is her not being afraid of my tools. Like, like as an example there, I just raised my stick and she went to be crazy. Like, let's see what happens if I try to touch her there. That's scary for her, okay? Easy. That's scary for her. She's, she's afraid of my tools. So initially, I don't want to go in with this animal that weighs 350 kilos of pure bone and muscle, okay, and try to uh, build her trust. Because there's one thing that will lack, respect. She's going to say, okay, you're not going to eat me. However, who's controlling who? So she'll start to try to control my feet. How do they do that? With levels of pressure, okay? So the first sign that she'll give me to move my feet is she'll look at me. Second sign, if I don't move my feet, she'll pin her ears back. She'll look a little ugly. Third level of pressure, she'll bite me. Fourth level of pressure, she'll turn and she'll kick me. She'll kick me as hard as she can, as long as she can, until I take one step back. Yeah? As soon as I take that one step back, pressure is released from her side. Now, when a horse kicks somebody or bites somebody, people uh, you know, think that the horse is angry. It's a, it's a bad horse. It's not. It's, it's totally calm on the inside. It's just its only way of communicating is, look, pin the ears, bite, kick. Okay? And then they groom each other. So they touch each other all over the place and all that kind of stuff. Right. Let's get started. I want to gain her respect first. So I'm going to control the direction. I want her to go that way. So I'm going to point, pressure, she doesn't understand. Now I'm going to increase pressure with a, with a sound. So she understands, well, not really. Now I'm going to increase pressure again. When she takes that one step, I'm going to release the pressure. So the one concept I want you guys to go away with is horses respond to pressure, but they learn from the release of pressure. So here there's no pressure. My hand is down, my stick is down, because she's doing what I want. Now I'm gonna change her direction. So I'm gonna stop her here, if I can. So that's controlling her feet. Now point this way, no response. Pluck, pluck, no response. Raise that pressure, release it. Okay, so training horses, in a, in, there's two ways to train a horse. There's with physical force, like using the physical characteristics to actually dominate. The other way is try to communicate with the mind. And if I want to give you an example of what that might look like, okay, and, and one thing to keep in mind <laughs> is horses are not made of glass, okay? So if she slips, the arena's not great there. She's not gonna hurt herself. And these are all typical signs of what you go through working with young horses. They'll overreact, they'll explode, they'll charge, they'll rear at you, they'll try to kick you. But my job is not to scare or dominate using physical force. You'll see that the more I keep stopping her and change, that was very nice. That was really light pressure. She responded, what do I do? Smack her? No. Release. Let her start to think. Drop in the head there. That's great. Now that's fantastic. Good. Good. So lots of changes of direction. Go this way. There you go. Now because this is a real Easy girl. This is a real training session. So she took control back there. I'll say no, no, no. Go this way. Now release. So when she does her own thing, it feels uncomfortable. When she chooses to do what I want to do, she feels good. Good. So I'm just going to be playing with her here a little bit, just gaining control of her feet, seeing if I can get her to go over some kind of obstacles. 
with one principle in mind. Release pressure when she's doing the right. Good girl, well done. She's probably not gonna be a big problem for me. Well done. Can you see the difference in how she's moving now? A lot less stress. She's not cantering. She's not running really fast. She's just kind of jogging or trotting. She's blinking her eyes, which is a sign that she's starting to relax. She's chewing and licking her lips and dropping her head. These are three of the major signs that a horse gives you when, it, when she tells you that she's starting to calm down. So she doesn't like it on this side. So let's see what we can do. So you see this? When she comes up to the pole on this side, she doesn't like it. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna release pressure when her nose is somewhere here. Let her know that that's the nicest place to be. Don't run away off to the side. Good. Now I'm not going to force her over. I'm just going to change directions. Get more control over her feet. Good. So this eye is good. She's not too worried about it. So I'm not going to let her get away this time. She has to face this. Good. There. Big round of applause for her. There. Good. See how quick that was? Now, if I was to, to have stood in front of her and just tried to drag her over that pole, I may have succeeded. But I would have succeeded only in physically making her do it. Which, you know, if you're okay with that, then fine, but there is no learning happening, you know? She'll never learn. She'll always have an issue with that pole. Good girl. How about we go this way? Well done. So now I feel no resistance on that side. I'm not going to drill and, and make her tired. It's not my aim at all. If you were here two days ago, it took me about eight minutes to put her in a state of mind where she was totally relaxed, allowed me to put the saddle on her back, I, I, I tightened up the saddle, she went wild for about 30 seconds, and then after 30 seconds we had, guess how many issues? Zero, okay? It's that quick if you know how to, I know it sounds silly, but talk to a horse, you know? It's just using pressure release a language that she understands. Can you see the difference now? She was walking around and she was trotting around just 10 minutes ago or something. Now she's pretty cool just standing there. Why? We've got the respect. Now she thinks I'm not a one horse herd anymore. There's something controlling my feet. I don't need to think. I just do something. That's fantastic. Whew. It's the difference of being in the CEO position when you've never had any experience being the CEO. You're thinking, it feels good on the first day, but now you need to start making decisions. You're like, oh, I don't know, actually. Ask that guy, you know? So now I've taken away the number one spot for her, and I put myself there. She's hungry. <laughs> so what we do now is we just increase. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. First really important thing is we got respect, but now we need to get that trust. So you guys remember when I put the stick up 10 minutes ago, she jumped out of her skin. Here she's moving, but she shows me a sign that she's taking interest, so I release. There, but don't move really that way. Here, release. Let her win. Always letting her win. How do you build a child's confidence? How do you build your own confidence? If you never know the answer to the question, you'll all, you're always going to be quite nervous. But if I let you win as a teacher, and I say, one plus one is two, what is one plus one? Two. Okay. If I ask you again, what is one plus one? You say two. 
Wrong! <laughs> so here it's about not forcing her to do anything. You see this rope? Now I'm going to increase that pressure. Good. And one principle applies with horses. I know most of people that ride horses or start when they were very young. They're told not to be loud, not to approach horses from, from behind them. Um, you know, just to be relatively slow. Don't move fast in front of a horse. Which is all fine for safety. However, if you're actually trying to develop a really good horse, you've got to be loud. The louder you are, the calmer she gets. Okay? They always say it in human language, fear the silent one, right? Yeah? So if somebody never gets angry, somebody's always totally cool, uh, you know that that person could potentially have a, you know, very uh, cunning plans for you. So you fear them. But somebody who explodes and gets angry at the slightest thing, you think, well, we know what's going on inside his mind. So I want to be the guy that explodes and, and just shows you everything that's inside me. So if I want you to stand still, just I'm going to make it obvious that I'm not going to hit you. Here's the rope. She's going to explore now, right? <laughs> My only, the only time I'm going to apply pressure is when she takes her nose away. Okay? I'm not going to hold her in place. Here we go. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Now I release. Does that make sense? So I don't release because she got scared. I actually increase the pressure when she gets scared. Now I'm going to do it again. She's probably going to run. So throw it over her back. She's a little nervous here, so I just wait. Now I'm going to start again. She's going to run. Pull her nose towards me. Then look at my hand. My left hand It's open. It's her choice to stand still or to run. So horses in general, they hate things that move or make a noise. What they do is they react, they run, and then once they're out of, out of range of the danger, they stop and they think. I want to reverse that. I don't want your child to be riding one of my horses and the horse sees something new, it jumps out of its skin and then runs. <laughs> what I want it to do is just stand still and relax. So what I'm trying to explain to her here is if something is scary, just stand still and relax, and it will go away. So can you see how she's getting calmer and calmer with me, just spanking the ground, look, chewing and licking. Chewing and licking. Why is that a good sign of relaxation? Because I'm a predator, she's a prey. What kind of prey animal would think about eating in the presence of a threat? None. Or actually two, two kinds. One is a stupid one that is dead, he's gonna be dead soon, and the other one is a dead one. So horses that are not very bright, that are very very dull in nature, they've been wiped out. Lions love them. So I've just got to keep going here a little bit. So this is better. This is better. This is what we want. Good girl. Excellent. So we're going to do the other side. Just going to touch her here. Good girl. Well done. And in, in reality, what's happening is when I'm saying good girl and well done and easy and all that is, is for your benefit. So that you see when she's doing the right thing and when she's not. Well done. But for her, she doesn't understand good girl. So why do I bump her nose towards me when she takes it away? Because when a horse is scared, it'll turn away from the thing she's scared of, and the first thing that they'll do is they'll kick. Who knows how strong a horse's kick is? If you had to put it in, in manpower. Anybody? Any engineers? 
one horsepower equals? I've read that it's 300, but it's, I don't think it is. Let's say it's, it's a lot less than that. Let's say it's 50. Let's say it's 50 men. So that would mean 50 men holding the end of this rope and her pulling back, they'd, keep, they'd probably keep tension. If there's 49 men behind me, uh, then she'd start to pull us. Which means that she kicks with the strength of 50 men. Who would like to be kicked in the chin? <laughs> I, I, honestly, I'd be dead. So that's the only time that I put tension on that rope. Good girl. So that's building a little bit of trust. Now let's see what she does with something really scary like this. It's shiny, it's going to make a lot of noise if she touches it. Let's see if she'll actually go over it. So that wasn't too bad of a reaction. Good. So here I'm just going to leave her alone. Well done! Excellent! Excellent! So what this horse is telling me is she's incredibly trainable plus she's going to be a really nice, calm horse. Well done. But do you see what she's doing with it? She's jumping over everything, which is a great start. But eventually what I want her to do is to walk over it with her head down. That's going to be a task. So there. <laughs> Wrong way. I control direction. And you just go. Well done. So this tells me, it's always reading the horse. This tells me she's ready to go to the next level. I can make it bigger. Easy, easy, easy. So she escaped that one. That's fine. Well done. Now what do I do? I send her over again? No. I release. Let her know that when you touch that thing, that scary thing, look. Dropping the head. Relaxing. So that was a 1 plus 1 equals 2. Now I'm going to ask her again. What's 1 plus 1? Like, I don't know. I think it's 11. Actually, no, it's 2. Well done. The stopper. Release. Good. The more I repeat this, the more confidence she'll get. She'll think, wow, this guy this thing that speaks, speaks horse in a very funny accent is actually trustworthy. He talks to me like my mother used to talk to me. My mother used to say, hey Dana, how about you move away from me? And when I didn't listen, she bit me. And when I didn't listen, she kicked me. This guy's the same. So now she's not jumping, she's not running, she's slowing down. Great. Well done. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open it up fully. Like that. And this time I'm going to ask her to follow me over. And the reason I want to do this, I'm kind of cheating a little bit. Good. Release that pressure. Take a step forwards, release. Let her investigate. So I don't punish this. I let her think. Because in nature, horses are reactive animals. They react to things. They don't really stand there and think. If she takes a step forwards, release. Like that. Think about things. <laughs> That's investigating, yeah? Now let's ask for another step. Hold, hold, release. 
And you can see, I said 50 men, right? This is two fingers. So when I'm putting a bit, a bit of pressure on here and she's resisting, that's like a fly. There. There, good girl. Two more steps. That's fine. Big round of applause for her. Oh, this is so much better. So now she's understanding. Yes, yes, one plus one is two. One plus one is two. One plus one is two. So that was zero pressure from me. Does that make sense? How quickly the horse changes? So that was underneath the horse. What about over the horse? Let's see what happens. So I'm trying to make as much noise as I can. Look what, what's happening to her. The louder I am, the quieter she gets. She's curious, I release it. Curious, I release. Now I'm just gonna go straight in. So really building trust now. She's starting to think anything new is not nothing to run away from, really. I'm just gonna let her investigate. Good girl. Well done. And Arabian horses, they're very well known in the horse world to be very explosive, very spooky horses. You know? Very difficult to work with. If you have a if you're lucky enough to get a really nice-minded Arabian, they're the most phenomenal horses in the world. And they're very easy to work with, even if you're not that experienced. But with all the breeding and the way people have bred these horses, you get a lot of beautiful horses that are incredibly spooky, but they're gorgeous. It's not the same as they used to be hundreds of years ago. about horses that they, they, they don't have the ability to lie. She can't be scared and look relaxed. Oh, that's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Big round of applause. Anybody care to, to tell me why you're clapping? That was incredibly scary for a horse. Rattling underneath her legs, she feels trapped. Something's coming into the sensitive area in her body. What did she do? What was her first reaction? She ran, right? She kicked at it, right? No, she stood still. 180 degree difference between before when I tried to touch her with a stick and she galloped, okay? So good signs that this horse is starting to respect me and trust me, respect me and trust me. Good. Let's see, if that was a fluke, I want to know. Not bad. Good girl. Right. So I'd like to, actually let's make this really, really hard for her. I'd like her to get going on a good circle. Easy girl. Over these poles, both weights. So this is, even though it's a physical exercise, it's a great mental exercise. So you, you do, you, hit two, you kill two birds with one stone. So you gain control of the feet, you build the horse's confidence over obstacles. So you see this, what is this? A horse that's calm or nervous? Nervous, jumping over everything she can see, running. So one way of handling this is just to do this for 
half an hour or an hour until she's just totally out of steam and she can't run anymore. She's like, oh, I'm dead. The other way is to reward the slightest try and to keep changing directions. Well done. Now imagine how brave and, and, and trustworthy these horses are going to be if they've gone through this type of training at the very beginning. You know, when you actually start to ride them, they learn incredibly quickly and there is no fear, but she's full of respect. So the lessons can be very quickly learned. So what they say is preparation is key. Well done. So I'm not going to keep, um, I'm not going to stop this until she, yes, until she slows down and shows me that she's moving a little bit more calmly. Otherwise we'd be rewarding what? The flight response. I don't want that. This is good. So reward her here. Just give her even a two, three second break. Let her know, ah, oh, that's where the rest is. Good. If I'm calm, I get to rest. Oh, that's great. Easy. So this side, which is her bad side, she's a little bit scared. Well done. Well done. Just trot. There. I don't want her to jump in. Well done, little girl. Okay, other way. We're just gonna do two more, two more circles. This is much better. Much better. Watch her start to chew and lick. Very, very soon. Because the head is starting to come down, the chewing and licking is gonna happen. Maybe not on that side. Well done. But you see that tarp, it means nothing to her anymore. There's a chewing and licking. She's not scared of that at all. So I'm gonna keep her going for just a couple of laps here until she finds the right rhythm. There we go. There we go. There we go. Well done. Well done, little girl. Okie doke. Um, Akram? Anybody? Can you ask him to bring uh, some of the jumps out? Right, this is going to be very difficult for her, okay? Why? You guys see a trailer, something that a, a, a box that a horse goes in and you take them off to beautiful adventures in the countryside and you go up the mountains and you have camping trips and it's, oh, it's wonderful. To her, what does she see? She sees a lion, me, predator, eyes on the front of my head, dragging her into his cave. Come with me. She says, no, never. I'm not an idiot. Well, that's good. Well done. I'm going to let her investigate here. So it's, it's really quite cool to start seeing things from a horse's perspective. This is not a, a man-made thing. This is a cave. It's a constricted, tight space. You know, saddles. What are saddles for horses? They're leather. They're dead cows, dead prey animals. So what we're gonna start to do here with her, little by little, is we're gonna try to convince her that the nicest place in this, pla in this arena to be is at least with four feet on this trailer, 
okay? If not, all the way inside. Let me just open that door behind so I can escape when she jumps in. So we've got to work with the horse's psychology. This is a psychology. I'm going to always release pressure. So this is pressure when she's doing what I don't want. And this is release of pressure when she's doing what I want, okay? So I'm gonna make her believe that anywhere outside of this trailer on all three sides, anywhere outside this trailer is a little bit of hard work. Good girl. And anywhere close to the trailer with your nose inside is rest. So if you're thinking of a color scheme, red, 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 blue. Just gonna wait for the call to prayer to end. small boxes. So this, this is quite good here. So I'm just gonna hold and release. When she comes forward, she's gonna get a nice break. But I can tell by her mind, the, lead, the last thing she's focusing on is this cave. In her mind, she's saying there's so much happening around me that I can't focus actually on one thing. There's a screen, there's people, there's lights, there's, you know, she's not used to any of this. So we're gonna have to work with that a little bit, okay? Right, so let's start, get to work and make this all everywhere around the arena a little bit of hard work. So I'm just gonna move her left to right, left to right, left to right. Good. She wants to step on it now, that's good. the fact that she's trotting relatively relaxed here. So I'm, now I've done the sides of the trailer. I'm going to make the front of the trailer now a red zone for her. Good. I'm going to gradually make the space between me and the trailer tighter and tighter. So she has to do that. Well done. Stop her there. Good job. Just make this space tighter and tighter so she hears that wood. And just, I hope she doesn't kick me as she goes, as she goes by. There. Nice try. Good try. But you can give me a little bit more than that. Now she's paying attention. So it's very, very important that I just stay quiet. So she took her foot off, now pressure is applied. Very good. 
good. Inside? Yeah, you can slip inside. I don't mind that. That's fantastic. So you see, we, we just there managed to successfully start to make her think about this trailer more than everything else that's going on outside. Well done. There, that's great. I love the fact that she's not rushing over it now. Excellent. That's fantastic. Another sign of relaxation there. Let's see if we can get her calm on this side. Nope. So remember, it was the same side that she didn't want to go over the poles with. So she doesn't really... There, there. Good. So one plus one equals two. Now let's see. One plus one equals... Equals... One plus one. Increase the pressure. Make her think. Better. She's gonna release it there. So let her know, yeah? When you go straight over it, it feels a lot better. Nope. Well done. And this may take a little bit of time, but I, this is no, there was no training beforehand. Good girl. You heard yourself there? just caught the edge there. So we'll see. Actually, if she wants to point her nose in, I'm going to allow that. Fantastic. Well done. So now we're just going to ask her to take another couple of steps. Like that. She takes a step back. I'm going to increase the pressure. So again, I'm holding it just with my, my least dominant hand, my left hand. That's such light pressure compared to a horse's power. So it's not like I can drag her in. It's impossible. So I'm going to just hold. Hold, release. Hold, release. She's coming way too close to me though. There. There. <laughs> now that she's so unsure, <laughs> straight away calling for mummy. Good girl. Well done. Can you fall? Yes. Yes. There we go. Just don't scream in my ear again, please. Kind of hurts. There. 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 She is trying so hard. She's giving it everything she's got. There we go. Okay. There you go. So we've kind of achieved what we wanted to achieve. We wanted to convince her just to put those four legs on. But we want to go a little bit further. We want to really try to convince her that the nicest place to be is inside. This is one of the most difficult tasks you can ever accomplish with a horse that doesn't want to go in. 
it is remarkably difficult. This is like you having an actual phobia. <laughs> you having the worst phobia in the world with regards to maybe flying. And what I'm doing to you right now is putting you in a in a in a two-person jet. Okay? Actually, I'm putting you in a plane with a fighter jet. That's what I'm doing, okay? And then let you jump out in the parachute. That's the level of, of um, psychological barrier that she has to go through here. Well done, well done. Resistance, there we go. Everybody, not a word. Excellent. So right now, it would be relatively easy for me to just walk in and pull her a little bit. She might come in. But there's two ways she has to move in this trailer. Forwards and backwards. So I need to develop her confidence going backwards. She did it by herself. I'm just going to go with it. Let her know that she can walk out and she can walk in. Come on now. Easy. Easy. So she really wants to come in here now, so it's the, the right time to back her out. And say, that was fantastic. Okay, how do I say that? With a carrot? No, by releasing the pressure. That is the best reward you can give to a horse. Plus this is a little bit of a psychological break. I just take it for a bit of a circle. Wrong way. This way. And take her back out again. Easy girl. Take her back in again. So this resistance, it'll go. It's one plus one plus two. Uh, one plus one equals two. There we go. Girl. So in here I'm just rubbing her, letting her know it's a really nice place to be, and then backing her out again. Well done. She's going to be willing or able to just walk in there on her own. So this is the resistance. I'm not going to release. Cool. There. That's legs that I want on. So she's not willing to give me those back legs. So you see this? Impossible to pull her in. 
impossible. So now I have to change strategies just slightly. Oh, that's great. You're a lucky little girl. No, look in here, please. Can I, I, I almost changed strategies. Well done. So it's important for me just to allow her the time. she does just feels uncomfortable. I have not, I do not possess the physical power to pull her in. It just feels uncomfortable. And she, she's motivated not by the discomfort but, but by the amount of comfort she gets in here. Does that make sense? That's very nice. Very nice. I'm just gonna rub her here. Hopefully she doesn't kick me or step on me. Stay calm, Amru. Stay calm. <laughs> Oops. That's one of the worst things gonna happen. A horse turns around in the trailer. You don't wanna teach him that. Absolutely not. That's good. Now back up at the trailer like a good girl. Good, and now walk up to the trailer. Now back out out of the trailer. Big round of applause, guys. Excellent. I might even play a magic trick on her here. Let's see how long it takes her to want to come out. Well done. So you see the difference? We, when she turned around and jumped off the trailer, we just put her straight back to work. I put her in, I backed her out, put her in, backed her out. And then when I put her in the second time, and I left her, what did she choose to do? She went out straight, okay? So this is not about physically overpowering a horse. Too many people think, like the other day, when we brought out the, the, the young mare, we saddled her very nicely, she respected me, she trusted me. It was all done live in about 40 minutes. It was really one of the most beautiful interactions I've ever had with a young horse. And then one guy came up to me later and he's like, give me the horse, I'll ride it now, I'll break it in. And that's the mentality that we really want to try to get rid of, you know? It's not about who's the bravest, could use another word, who's the bravest, who can actually get on a crazy animal that's fighting for its life and hold on until it actually physically can't do anything else. It's about, we're a lot more sophisticated now, okay? We can understand things, we can do things in a, in a very simplistic, very natural way. And I think that anything you do that is in harmony with nature looks relatively beautiful, okay? Not that I think I look beautiful, don't say that, you know? But the interactions in humanity and in nature is very, very beautiful. So anything that looks aggressive and ugly and, and you're, there's a struggle between two things, you know there's something that could be fixed there. That's my aim, that's my mission. They say to change your results, you've got to change your actions. To change actions, we all know that human beings are driven by emotion. So how do we change emotions? We've got to change our thinking. So I hope that I've slightly altered the way that you think about horses today. Um, we're going to be back at 6 o'clock with the final sort of ride with the very young mare that we've got in the back. This will be her second proper ride, okay? 
in a big arena, in a big event like this. She's had a total of two hours and 15 minutes total time of working in this way, okay? So I'd like you to come out and just have a proof of the results of, you know, this way of, of working with horses. Thank you very much, and if you've got any questions, I'm available. Those applause are for her, really. She did, a, she did an amazing job, an amazing job. Have we got any questions from the crowd? Do you own horses that won't go into trailers, that are scared, that are pull, on, pull on your hands, that always spooky, won't let you get on? Any questions like that? Any questions about what we've done today? Please, you guys are so alive. <laughs> Sleep, sleep, sleep. I'm just kidding, she's doing that by herself. <laughs> Sorry, I, it wasn't six o'clock, it's around eight o'clock. The demonstration is at eight o'clock. <laughs> 